hello everybody it's your old pal tuna here back with another video today is january 9th it is bright and early on a monday morning and i just got my mail so i thought we could open up this package together this is a package from m and sprout and m and sprout is an independent kind of like gothy halloween alternative brand and they make like really cute stuff I've been following them for a super long time, always wanting to get something from their catalog, constantly tempted, but the problem is, is I live in Canada and shipping to Canada is prohibitively expensive, so I really had to want it. Now, I needed a certain something and finally, I decided to take the plunge. Oh my God! So I'm a slipper person. I wear slippers in my house like literally all year round. Therefore, my slippers are kind of gross and I wanted to treat myself to a new pair. Yeah, these are adorable and they're super sturdy and heavy too. They're basically like little indoor shoes, which is exactly how I use them. So that's perfect. And then of course, because I was paying the shipping anyway, I thought I'd see if anything else appealed to me. I love a good pair of novelty socks. These are so cute. The Mothman design is one of my favorites. They also do that in like a plush. And if it wasn't for the fact that I already have a surplus of stuffed animals, I, I would have gotten that too. And then what's in here again? Oh yeah, little coffin earrings. I'll just leave them correct side up. Coffins are fun, <laughs> right? They're fun. That's the word that people use to describe coffins. Uh, but yeah, super cute. Just a little, just a little box of surprises. Thought, uh, thought we could open it up together. By the way, look who's been ever so slightly out of view the entire time. So cute. I decided that January would be kind of like a low work month for me. I didn't want to overload my schedule because I have a couple of things I want to play catch up with. Uh, this morning, I just finished up writing the thank you notes for the December parcels that are going out, which Mark actually packed for me bless his soul because I had to cut out all the stickers and everything and I have to design the thank you notes and print the thank you notes and cut the thank you notes and write the thank you notes. So he packed them, took like, I don't know, an easy two hours off of my to-do list. So bless his heart. But those notes are done. I still need to seal the envelopes and uh, procure the postage required because I'm pretty sure I'm low on stamps. I am always low on stamps. But I'm gonna take a little break from that in order to finish up some fun stuff. I realized, uh, that time is about to fly. I have a convention at the beginning of March. It's Emerald City Comic Con. I'm going down there for the three or four days to sell my wares. It'll be the first con of 2023. And because of that, I wanted to have some new stuff. I went through the rest of 2022 kind of selling out of the merch that I had, mostly being my enamel pins. I just kind of wanted to clear out the designs that I already had in stock. But that means I made room for some new stuff. And given that Chinese New Year is going to be celebrated at the end of January for like a week or two and my suppliers will be not working for those weeks, week or two. I need to get my designs in like now this week so that I know I will have them in hand before I head down to Seattle for that show. So this is where I'm at so far with uh, the merch designs. I decided that it's more satisfying to do merch in little mini series. So instead of like designing a bunch of random stuff that's just like, oh, this is about cats and oh, this is about food and oh, this is about Halloween. I'm focusing on cat food. The series is gonna be called The Kitty Cafeteria. And I decided that I wanted to do four enamel pins, a embroidered patch, some sticker sheets, and maybe some other fun stuff that I'm not going to reveal yet just in case it doesn't happen. But here are the designs that I've done. What I originally did actually was I came up with a whole bunch of ideas. First thing I did was like beat out that I wanted to do kitty cafeteria as a theme. And then I decided that I wanted to do the four pins that would be representative of each meal that you'd have in a day. So breakfast, lunch, dinner, and dessert. And then I sketched as many ideas as I could come up with just real quick like nitty gritty using kind of using reference kind of not and from there i picked out my favorite from each category and designed the pin based off of the mini sketch so today i'm going to take these sketches that i've done i'm going to clean them up i'm going to create vectors out of them i'm going to select my pantone colors and i'm going to get this ready to send to my supplier
All right, here are the final raster files that I have. Um, these are separated into a few different layers. I have a layer for the uh, line work, which is what the metal of the enamel pin will be. I have a layer for the flat color fill, which will be the enamel fill in the troughs of the pins. And then I have different layers for each color of screen print. So in this case, uh, all of the files have a white layer of screen print, which is the little shiny highlights that don't have a circle around them because when you're making an enamel pin, anywhere you want a delineation of color in the poured enamel has to have a little border of metal around it. So we use screen print in order to have the borderless effect of the color for like highlights, shadows, details. And I have the dark brown that is the shadow on some of the yellow pieces. And then on this one, the little paw prints in blue will also be a screen print. Every color of screen print obviously adds an additional cost to the pin. Every color in the pin adds an additional cost to the pin. These are probably gonna be expensive pins, but they're so, so cute. I'm really happy with how they turned out. And the next step is going to be to turn them from a raster into a vector. So I am using the program Inkscape here to convert my rasters to vectors. It's so simple. All I have to do is go to path, trace bitmap, and then it just creates a vector image from my line work. From there, uh, I can tweak the little points to make it a little bit perfect. But for the most part, the trace is really good. So I just load in all of my files and individually go through. You have to make sure that the um, no matter what color the intended line work is, you have it black so that when like it can trace the bitmap properly. I don't, I don't exactly know what a vet, like what is going on here with the vectors and the rasters and how this all works, but it does and you don't have to be very smart to do it. <laughs> and if you don't wanna learn how to do this, if you don't wanna download Inkscape, it's a free program by the way, you can submit the raster files to your manufacturers. That's no problem. They can create these vector images for you, but this just allows a little bit more freedom to, again, tweak those points, make things perfect, because otherwise you're having to like give description feedback to people, which can be kind of hard. So once that's all done, I'm gonna go back to Clip Studio Paint and I am going to start selecting my colors. So the colors that I had originally in my designs were kind of estimates, and now I'm gonna go through what's called the Pantone Solid coded color chart and I'm going to try and find colors that match the colors that I had envisioned in my original designs. This takes a little bit of trial and error and the thing is is at the end of the day because I don't actually have like the printed out booklet from Pantone of these swatches I'm kind of guessing I'm kind of hoping for the best and my only piece of advice for doing this is like cheat things a little bit lighter than you want them to be because in my opinion, I'm happier if something comes out a little bit lighter than I intended, but if things turn out darker than I intended, that's where I really start getting frustrated with the with the results. And what I'm creating here is what I'm going to send to the manufacturer. So I pick out all of my colors and then I'll go through and adjust them on the uh, the reference images. I don't know if like this layout of how to send the design is really that necessary. I bet I could just send a picture of the finished design and they'd be able to, you know, handle it. But I kind of like to cross my T's and dot my I's. So I have kind of each phase, there's the, uh, the metal and then there's like the enamel fill and then there's like the first screen print and then there's the second screen print. So it's all just broken down into phases to kind of explain better my ultimate vision for the um, finished piece. And yeah, I go through and do this for every single pin design that I have. Uh, luckily, I was kind of going for a pretty like consistent color palette here, so I just was able to duplicate a lot of the colors that I'd already chosen. It's a little bit time consuming, but it means you're gonna get a really good end product. I hope you didn't find that too confusing. It's not that complicated. It just takes a little bit of practice to understand like how to get the best possible outcome from your pins, because the more understanding of the process that you have the more control that you have over the final product like the happier you're going to be in the end but like i said there's kind of a degree of randomness to how the colors will ultimately look so don't get too tied up in it being perfect just try and get it try and get it to a place where you're happy with it but those are all done i have all four mapped out sent to my manufacturer same with the patches spent a whole bunch of money really hoping that pays off <laughs> I'm jazzed with the designs and I want to create a few more things, but I'm gonna do that like closer to the actual um, event of Emerald City Comic Con and the shop drop because I have more pressing ma matters to attend to this week. Next up on my list is creating the print rewards for this month's 
big lunch club. I uh, am planning to do some gouache painting. I'm trying to make it so that uh, my print reward every month there's something gouache related. And when I was coming up with these designs, I'm trying to think of like what would someone want to hang on their wall because I often feel that my design style, like when it comes to the stickers and even like the pins, this very graphic, cute kind of look doesn't lend itself extremely well to being like up on a wall. That could be my own insecurities talking, but I try and focus on like when I'm designing something, it's not, I'm just gonna draw this picture and then I'm gonna make it a print. It's not, I'm gonna draw this picture and then, oh, I'll throw it on a t-shirt. It's like, I am designing this to be a print or I am designing this to be on a t-shirt. I think it helps me to focus my ideas a little bit more and like force the drawing in the best direction that it possibly can go in. And I think the limitations of the acrylic wash are really good to force me to think like that, you know? I am fighting through exhaustion to finish this. I just finished the base coat, which is really fun because now I can peel off the tape. I am gonna push through, but do you ever have those days where you just can't find the stride? You just can't like hit that note of being able to follow through and get in the vibe and all that jazz. I don't know if it's like the super gloomy weather. I don't know if it was my really late start today because uh, the cat, who is now sleeping peacefully, was up to no good until about two o'clock and Mark went into work late today. I'm gonna throw on some true crime. <laughs> that might help me be able to focus and luckily this is a really simple painting. Um, there's only a handful of colors, so I should be able to just mix up some batches, kind of fill it in, and then do the line work on top of that. It, I think it's really going to be super cute, and my plan is to break the two characters up into two smaller prints, but I thought it would be nice to paint them together. That way, if anyone wants to purchase the original, they kind of have something that is different from what the, uh, the prints end up looking like. <sighs> but... This is all just to say, if you ever have days where you just simply cannot, but you must, you are not alone. That's where I'm at. And uh, I'd much rather just, I don't know, watch GDQ, but we gotta paint. All right, I'm gonna jump in here now with voiceover tuna to give you a little bit more info about this painting and my process on it. Uh, I am using cold press watercolor paper. 
this is my favorite material acrylic gouache we've been here done that and it's funny because in the clips that i recorded before i started on the painting i actually had an entirely different idea in mind of what i was going to paint but i started humming i started hawing just like i said i want something to feel like compelling to put on the wall and i guess i just didn't feel that way about my first idea so i decided to switch to cute girls holding cute animals because how can you possibly go wrong with something like that the majority of my painting process is just going through flatting colors one color at a time uh, i've created a bunch of tints of the same tube color so sometimes i'll be like mixing my paints to get the color that i want but in this particular case i felt like it would make a lot more sense to stick to the tube colors as closely as possible and then just like shade them up and down so it's ash blue misty blue and then i think the background is light aqua it's basically like three colors and then there's the, the skin tones that come later and black and white but I go through flatting each color separately because mixing paint is difficult with acrylic gouache because it dries really quickly. And when it dries, it usually dries like a shade lighter or darker than what it um, looks like when it's wet due to the way that it's like reflecting the light, light or when it's uh, wet versus dry. So I mix up a decently sized batch of whatever you know tint or color I need. And then I go through being like, okay, the, the legs and the, uh, of one character and the sweater of the other character are the same so i'll do them you know stages i i think that makes sense that's straightforward right i consider this flatting stage to be like part one of the painting process and it can look kind of weird at this point but i just trust the process i know once i add all the lines and details on top it's gonna make sense i held off doing the skin until the end flatting process because i knew it was gonna like pop and add a little bit of drama to the process it was the only real contrasting color and i chose like uh, skin tones with orangey undertones to really go nicely with the blue and once I'm done with all the flats I move into doing details and this is where I whip out my handy dandy tiny brushes uh, and these brushes that you'll see are my favorite um, they are from Amazon I literally get so many questions about these brushes they are from Amazon they are from miniature brush sets so these are designed to be painting like little tiny toys which is why they're so small and they work really well with the gouache for detailing and right now i'm following along with my digital sketch that i have up in front of me to inform where i want to place the details because obviously when i have these like flat colors a lot of the time i can't see the sketch that i did underneath it but at the same time i do this pretty intuitively where i'll start with like my whites and then i'll go to like light gray just for example with this painting and then medium gray and then dark gray and then maybe black i kind of want to keep pushing the line work like starting as light as possible and then moving to dark only where entirely necessary and it's not part of my usual technique but this time i did decide to leave some of the areas unlined uh, and this was to create a little bit more of a simple look for this painting. I did want to try, every time I paint something, I want to try something new. And so leaving these things unlined was part of that. And in fact, I feel like towards the end, there were areas that I added lines to where I kind of wish I didn't. I'd let them just stand as like a block of color on their own. But it's all part of the learning experience. Every painting I make, I learn something new, something I do want to do next time, something I don't want to do next time. Uh, and by the way, the paint is watered down uh, more so than it is when I'm doing my flat areas. I uh, add just enough water so that it's like going to run very smoothly for me, but not so much that it's going to pool up on the paper or drip off the brush or anything like that. Not, this just comes with experience. Um, I've been working with gouache now for... I, I want to say like five years and even though I don't do a ton of painting like I've done enough paintings that I, like I say every time I do a painting I learn something new and then I can apply that going forward and not make mistakes or at the very least not as many mistakes as I used to. <laughs> I think the real time for this piece was about four hours and if I'm not mistaken this is on one of my 9 by 12 pieces of paper but the painting itself is about 8 by 10 that's usually kind of what I aim for so that there's a nice little white border around the uh, original piece. And the last step that I work on here are the faces. Sometimes I start with the face, sometimes I end with the face. I usually do not do the face in the middle because it is kind of the scariest part. It's where the details really matter, like especially when you're working with such a simple style like this, you know, those dot eyes on the penguin, for example, have to be in the perfect spot or it's just not gonna be cute. And for these final details, I am working with my smallest brush, and by the time I get to the face, I have switched to black. It is the only part of the painting that is fully black, the, the eyes um, and the mouth on the right side character, because I thought that that would add 
the amount of contrast because the more contrast you have like that's where people's eyes are going to be drawn to and so by having <clears throat> the dark eyes um it would kind of like draw you in and capture you from right from that point and then when you add the little dot white highlight on the eyes then that adds like a ton of contrast because you have black next to white and then yeah that's where people's attention is drawn to I'm going to break this piece up into two separate prints. It will be a very easy process in post-production on the computer because the background is flat and clean. I'm really happy with how this came out. I think it's super cute. I think if I was to do it again, there are some changes that I might make. And there were some changes that I played with in post-production. Like there was like the idea of adding a drop shadow where they're standing. But it just, it worked. But at the same time, like sometimes you don't want to go too far and i definitely suffer from like overworking my pieces a lot of the time so i have to sort of censor my own ideas and tailor myself back just to keep things like as simple as i'm intending to do and while these are the end of the clips i did do some extra tinkering at the end once every single color and line is in place that's when i can kind of step back and be like okay what's working what's not what do i need to change what do i need to add but here it is the final painting for your viewing pleasure Thank you so much for watching another video. I hope you enjoyed the process of me making that painting. I feel like I did a lot in this video, which is kind of fun and exciting. If you are interested, you can grab the prints of the painting that I made. Those are over on my Patreon for my big lunch club. And that's a sign up till the end of January. So if you do want to support me over there, it'd be much appreciated. Otherwise, if you made it to the end of the video, don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe, leave me a comment. What, what should I ask them to, to leave a comment about? Let me know if breakfast, lunch, dinner, or dessert is your favorite meal of the day. Otherwise, I will be back next week with another video. Might be a vlog, might not. You'll just have to wait and see, but thanks for being here.